As we'll go ahead and start the match for Abraham's turn. It will be on Traverse. A lot of one drops in the Mardu Vehicles deck. Uh, one Inventor's Apprentice, four Thraven Inspectors, four Toolcraft Exemplars. And it will be the Exemplar starting the game this turn. For Abraham, it's a Grim Flare. Which will fatally be pushed off, and one damage will come in. Mardu Did, didn't have the one two punch of Thraven Inspector with that fatal push, but still yeah, a fine turn. Another one drop would be great. He does have a second copy of Fatal Push. That's something, um, it's in it's in the Black Green Delirium decks, but it's also a card that's great against the Black Green Delirium decks. Yeah. Without even triggering Revolt, it kills many of their creatures. Big pickup here for Kelly on turn three. It's a copy of Scrap Heap Scrounger. Good attacker and a way to trigger the Toolcraft Exemplar. He's going to go for the Aether Sphere Harvester. Get that vehicle into play. Abraham will push away the Toolcraft Exemplar, though. And now some guard advantage. It's Tireless Tracker on turn four for Stern. Nets himself a clue. And this may be one of the difficulties right now for what I think Mardu Vehicles could face is that with so many decks playing Fatal Pushes and Grasp of Darknesses, um, the curve you out with ones and twos strategy has a lot of predators. Mm -hmm. One thing that is nice is the vehicles... Aethersphere Harvester, it's really hard to hit that with the removal spells that these decks are playing. Yeah. You have to trigger a bolt and be able to fatal push it. Uh, you have to catch it in combat to be able to grasp of darkness it. All right, so Brandon cleans up the board thanks to a shock and a scrap heap scrounger. So it gets in some damage, but Abraham will respond with Mindrack Demon. That's a four or five. You mentioned it's one of the ways that he can get by the Harvester as it blocks very well here. Mm -hmm. But I, this is the part of Brandon's deck, so the one drops, two drops. Not as big of a fan of those. But when I look at Scrounger plus Harvester, I do like that. And DePaul is going to be great here, too. So the Legend crews the Harvester and also pumps it. It's now going to be a 4-6. See, it connects for 4. And Brandon declined his DePaul trigger here. Yeah, it looks like he wanted to Fatal push away the Mindrack Demon after the Scrounger was blocked. He could have activated it for 1. That's true. You see, out of cards here. So he could have, could have had w 1 shot. But we'll see. If DePaula lives, it's not going to matter. Abraham cracking a clue. An activation for five next turn would be very good. Yeah. And that's not going to happen. Grasp of Darkness takes down the Dwarf. And Grim Flare now onto the board for Abraham. How about Thalia, though, for Brandon? He'll use it to crew the Harvester. Harvester swings. And that's going to make it a lot harder for Abraham to try to make blocks. Yeah, and keep in mind, there's two mana up. Brandon does have a Scrap Heap Scrounger in the yard and plenty of creatures to feed to it. Yep. Brandon, at, with the life totals 9 and 16, it's going to be hard for Abraham to race. He does Ruinous Path the Thalia Awakening a Forest, however. Going back to Brandon, he does not bring back the Scrounger. That's a miss there. He can still bring it back this turn and crew the Harvester, which he would need another creature to crew. Unlicensed disintegration takes care of Flair. Yeah, it just passes. I think he's missing it right now, and that's that's a lot of damage that he's missing. Especially with Abraham at six, it's gonna really hurt him that he doesn't hit make that play. And this Vergerous Gear Hulk makes this forest uh, potentially a two-turn clock. Yeah, so swings for eight, Brandon down to eight. And just passes. And two attacks with that Harvester, yeah, that would have been lethal. It's looking like it's going to be a missed opportunity for Brandon Kelly. This swing, though, is going to be lethal, and Black Green, Green Delirium will capitalize on the play and take the first game. A lot of trading of resources in the early game. Uh, so Scrappy Challenger kind of shines in that situation. Uh, some missequencing there. So Black Green Delirium are going to be up a game here on Mardu Vehicles. We're going to go look at the sideboard, starting on Brandon Kelly. Uh, Two Authority of the Council, two Fragmentize, two Selfless Spirit, two Decoration in Stone, two Shocks, two Chandras, a Fatal Push, a Key to the City, and a Sky Sovereign. Uh, so there's a lot of trading going on here, and I'm thinking in Brandon's spot he might want to look for some cards that are, are really good in trading situations. Mm -hmm. uh, so something about this matchup is Black Green Delirium is just generating, on average, larger creatures in the Mardu Vehicles deck. So I like Decoration in Stone a good amount. Uh, clean answer to Mind Rack Demon. You let him draw a card, but you know that's, that's kind of whatever. Chandra can be good for cleaning up a lot of the creatures on the other side, as well as the extra Fatal Push. That's pretty excellent. 
Uh, I like Shock a good amount. It can take care of a Grim, Grim Flayer in the early game, and that's when the Marty Vehicle deck is trying to win the early to the mid game. Yeah, that much. I do like Chandra here. It's, I guess, in a trading situation, right? It can come down, uh, minus three, trade with a creature, and leave a Planeswalker, which yep. does seem like the kind of thing he wants. And the matchup will involve a decent amount of blocking, so Key to the City is probably pretty good here as well. Yeah, a Sky Sovereign. It's an expensive card, but when we're looking at cards that can trade really favorably, I think I'd like it here. We saw it out of the Team Rail Drazi deck beat up a deck that was playing a lot of Planeswalkers. Right. So if you expect your opponent to go that route, Sky Sovereign definitely shines. Um, and th there is a lot of trading going on here, so I could definitely see Sky Sovereign uh, really excelling in a game that's about a lot of Planeswalkers. All right, over on Abraham Stein's side, though, I mean, if you want to talk about a deck that wants to just trade and trade favorably, Black Green is a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Yehenny's Expertise, To the Slaughter, Transgress, Lost Legacy, uh, Lifecrafters, Bestiary, even. Uh, Kalitas, Root Out, Ishkana, Obnixilis, Nissa. There's a lot of a lot to like. Yeah, Kalitas and Ishkana are both great, just large bodies that have relevant abilities. There's a good ob um, argument for Obnixilis, just as a redundant removal spell is once you get, get into the mid to the late game to keep up on cards. This is the first time I've seen Yehenny's expertise on the sideboard where it looked excellent. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about that card here. Yeah. All right, so we are right now in Richmond. It's our second. Break, we have regionals going on. Um, so, modern, standard. I know I'm going to be playing. I, I'm working to brew up a deck for regionals. I'm very oh, yeah. excited about, a, about Ether Revolt. Matthias has been talking to me about SRAM and Pierce Steel Paladin all weekend. Maybe. We, I think we can do better. Where there's, <laughs> I, <laughs> when there's a set full of artifacts, I think I want to play a lot, of, a lot of really not legitimate magic cards. I'm either going to be playing Grixis Delver or the 8 Burning Tree Emissary deck. See, I could get behind the 8 Burning Tree Emissary deck. I know it's creatures, and I don't like that, but they do cost zero, and I do like that. So, so you're, I'm, I'm somewhat on board here. I like games that end on turn three. Yeah, right. We just like crack a fetch land. Uh, play the new Burning Tremissary, play the old one, then play a Bushwhacker. Okay, I, this I is wanna, good. This I wanna, is good. I want to win on turn 20 or turn 3. All right, so after regionals, we're going to take a break, and then we have our first team open of the season. That's in Baltimore, February 18th and 19th. Uh, show up in a team of three. You need a legacy player, a standard player, and a modern player. This is the first time Star City has run an event like this. Uh, we're going to be casting. I am really excited for this event. This event's going to be awesome. All right. Can't wait. After that, we have our first Modern Open. It's in Indianapolis. Then we take a week off, go to Dallas for Modern, and then have the Legacy Open of Season 1. That's going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts, April 8th through 9th. So two chances to play Legacy this season. It's going to be February in Baltimore and April in Worcester. Then we go through the latter part of the season. We go to Atlanta for some standard, Louisville, Baltimore for Modern, Charlotte for Modern, and then we end with our Season 1 Invitational. It's at the end of June. It's going to be Modern and Standard, the Season 1 Invitational weekend in at Roanoke, Virginia. It's going to be the first of this new restructuring of the Invitational. We're really excited for this event as well. I expect the Invitationals this year to be extremely excellent tournaments. All right, and you can get playmats for joining each of these events. Of course, for standard events, why not? Other than the, the card that's in every standard deck, we have Smuggler's Copter available. You know, it's a... Uh Mardu Vehicles, I'm sure they'd play for this card. Yeah, it's weird that more people aren't playing this card this weekend. It seems pretty good. <laughs> you get the... <laughs> You know, you get the expert, the uh, in, invention here from Kaladesh. It's going to be uh, Aether Vial here for the modern events. Another card that was once banned in Standard. There's kind of a theme going here. All right, and then for Legacy events, we have the Eternal Masters edition of Gamble. So all these available, depending on the event you sign up for and for the Infinite Challenge weekends, these are free with entry to the Opens, Classics, and for the Infinite Challenges. But we're going to bring you back to the match. This is game two between Brandon Kelly and Abraham Stern, Black Green Delirium, and Mardu Vehicles. Mardu on the play this game. A turn one Toolcraft Exemplar was fatally pushed. We do have Scrap Heap Scrounger making the play, but Abraham responds with Grim Flare. And once again, these early games just feel like a lot of back and forth trading. You know, two drops, dying to fatal pushes. Mm -hmm. um, we're buying time until the, the, the more expensive cards hit the table. And Spire of Industry doing some work here. That was the black source that Brandon currently has available to. Was able to cast that because he has a scrap heap scrounger. 
Tyler's tracker from Stern throws that out. He can play this one into a face of removal, especially thanks to the fact that he has another tireless tracker in hand. Mm -hmm. Veteran motorist from Kelly. Keep in mind, Kelly looks like he missed the third land drop that turn. Yep. He's a deck that wants to make approximately three land drops. He can do some stuff on two, given the fact that uh, he doesn't seem to be casting a multiple one drop creatures. Missing this land drops could be problematic for him. Yeah, and this is a situation where he would have liked to have tried to scry for the land, but first he had to get the scrounger in place so that Spire of Industry could make the red mana for the motorist. Right. And meanwhile, Abraham Stein is setting up for an attrition game here. Uh, it's not always often that your turn three Tireless Tracker gets to live until the next turn, but when it does, his play of a second Tracker and then a, a land for double clue, that's pretty great. Yep. For Kelly, the Motorist trades away with one of the Trackers. Aethersphere Harvester is the play. And yeah, he'll, he'll offer a trade with Scrounger for Tracker, but I don't know that Abraham's biting. Yeah, the first one, that one makes sense. Abraham is down to 14. Yeah. And it actually looks like he's going to, he's fine trading cards away. He's already got two clues on reserve there. Kali toss the play. I, I guess when you are light on lands, you see Abraham missing land five here. Um, cracking clues for Tireless Tracker is maybe not how you can spend your turns. Yeah, and I think he has a Virgarus Geralk in hand that's uncastable yet. I mean, that seems great with Kali toss, right? You see Thalia for Brandon Cruz, the Harvester, and swings. I mean, all Abraham needs is an untapped land, and then what, a, a not, an eight? Seven yeah, power, seven life power link. lifelink? That like, seems fine. Yeah. Draw for Abraham. It's not a land. Not yet. Might have been a traverse. That's kind of a land. Yeah, That'll we'll be a land, turn. just not he now. He already has Grasp at the ready, so he can get rid of the Thalia and generate a zombie on this turn. That's pretty good. So traverse the Ulfen Vault will find him a fifth land. Right, so we can grasp, make a zombie, crack a clue. This is all pretty good for Abraham. Yep. And, you know, this is something I, we haven't seen too much Mardu vehicles this weekend. And watching this match, um, both decks are just about this trading of creatures and removal. And it, it just feels to me like Black Green's going to end up on the better side of this most of the time. Mm hmm once we get into the Verderous Gearhulk phase of the game, they're just going a way bigger. Yeah, Mardu doesn't have cards like that. Mm -hmm. And their lower drops aren't enough better to win the early game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, executing these early one-for-one -one trades just favors the Black Green Delirium deck. Scrounger for Brandon will crew the Harvester and swing. But there's this issue that Abraham has started connecting with the Kalitas, so he, he's gaining life. Brandon's not actually making progress here. Right, and he has a zombie at the ready. He can turn that into a five-point lifelinker. Or, you know, cast Virtus Kirhulk, make it a seven. Crack of a clue for Abraham Stein. Untaps here. A lot of good options. He has Virtus Gearhulk. He also has Ishkana in hand. I believe Instant Sorcery Creature are the card types in Graveyard currently. Okay, so we'll have to play Gear Hulk and let it die, and then and then Ishkana? Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> oh, maybe, no. maybe, it just, <laughs> maybe it just lives, <laughs> you know? But then we, won't, then we won't get spiders, but we'll just have, you know, a giant creature. Too bad we can't put these clues in our graveyard. Land six as well for Abraham. He's got a lot of options. It's going to be Verderous Gear Hulk. Four, one, one counters. How does he want to split them up? He's got this life linker <laughs> that <laughs> it's hard to do this wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. A swing for nine from Abraham will drop Brandon down to 12, move Abraham up to 16, and, and he's just going to sail away with this one. And what this split accomplishes by making the zombie a 4 4, it can now attack into Aether Sphere Arvester just fine. Um, making it a 5 allows it to beat it, but you can't make it a 5 and also make the Kalidus a 5. So this, this is a pretty solid split here. Raven a Spectre for Brandon. Uh, that one's going to be a little too little too late. Yeah, Thaimon Spectre will make a clue, but it's once we get to this point, you know, like, I would say, man, hope maybe Brandon can draw his Fumigates and Sky Sovereigns, but he just, like, doesn't have enough of those cards, right? Mm-hmm. In the Marty Vehicles deck, it is a deck that's trying to leverage Gideon. Well, Brandon neither has a fourth land or board presence, really. Just can't really even do that in this game. He's just counting it up. How can we survive from here? Uh, difficult. 
Well, step one is you'd have to kill the Kalitas, right? If there's, there's life linkers connecting, then the game's over. Uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger is blocked. I think, yeah, this isn't going to work. So you can't actually fatal push the Kalitas. No, you well, no, can't. No, oh, it's just play. leaves play. It's not, you're right. So, okay, so he, he has to suicide away the Scrounger in, ugh. I get it. it. He has to make this play. He's for sure just losing to that card on the table. Unclear if this is a winning yeah. line, but I understand why you would take it. Right, so he suicides away the Scrounger so that he can get Revolt, so that he can kill Kalitas. The, the issue is that he traded his 3-2 to give Abraham a 2-2. Mm -hmm. I like that we're playing to outs here. It's, it is rough, though. Mm -hmm. It's actually some question of whether Abraham was even supposed to block there. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> You have to assume it's Fatal Push, right? I mean, it's as large that he's at 16. And you have a Life Linker. <laughs> yeah, you always have this giant Life Linker. Like, yeah, I'll take some damage, whatever. Right. Swing from Abraham. Brandon blocks with the Aether Sphere Harvester. Mind Rack Demons the follow-up, sure. And that puts a land into the graveyard. That means Ishka things are delirious for Ishkana next turn. Mm -hmm. And with Brandon Kelly at six, uh, Abraham should be able to clean this up on the next turn. Yep. And Apollo will join the fight for Brandon. It means that the Harvester would be a 4-6. There, I think, was a point in this game where that could have mattered, especially right. against Abraham's board. But uh, we're past that. Right. We're at a stage where Abraham is significantly ahead on board. He also has Ishkana plus seven lands. You could win this game outside of combat. Seventh land still in his hand, but I assure you it's there. Yeah, and with no energy in play for Brandon, he's he can't. I don't even. He may not even have a block this turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brandon's just gonna try to make it lethal here. Uh, Traverse. I like this play. Traverse for another Verdurous Gear Hulk. He has two trampling creatures on the battlefield. Yeah. Currently that's eight great. total power. That's great. Let's put more more counters on our tramplers. And here we go. Another Virtus Kirkhawk just flying onto the battlefield. It's hard to once again it's hard to mess this one up. You could Basically, uh, the only thing that's slightly incorrect is putting counters on your non-trampling creatures, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong. You'd still win. Yeah. Swing here. This is going for lethal. We'll see if Brandon has a block that keeps him alive. He is at five. And we have 12 power worth of trample. So if that's the case, Brandon only has... Yeah, he only has nine toughness, so he's taking three off Trample for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, then that's so. With that much Trample, there's not a way for him to survive, certainly not with Thalia. And it is Abraham Stein on Black Green Delirium, uh, winning the match two games to zero. First game very close. Uh, second game, Black Green just running away with it. The matchup looked a little bit rough for the Marta vehicles deck. Uh, these early one-for-one -one trades, which both decks 